Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mawani. I hope you all are doing good, my dear friends. Uh, today is 24th January. Day is Friday. We are going to talk about uh, India, Brazil. We are going to talk about BRICS as well. Very interesting article written by an ex-diplomat. But before that, I would like to inform all of you that at present, 70% off is available on all our Pendrive and Android courses. Last date is 27th January. It's a Republic Day sale that is going on. Make the most out of it to download the PDF of today's lecture. These are the two sources. Share this lecture. Don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. So, dear friends, uh, on your screen, you can see the picture of uh, Jade Bolsonaro. I'm going to call him JB for today. Right, uh, Much easier to call him JB. So, JB, who is JB? JB is uh, President of Brazil. Why he is in current affairs or in news or on our table? Because he is going to be a very important guest, official guest of our country for a Republic Day celebration of 2020. Now, Brazil, remember a few days ago, there was one article written by a former diplomat. We analyzed that particular article. We talked about the geography of Brazil. I hope you remember Equator. Tropic of Capricorn, Amazon, Amazon uh, River, Jungle, and many more things, uh, countries sharing border with Brazil and other things. So if you are, let's say, new or this is the first time that you are watching this video, then what you can do is go through, join this channel, first of all, right? Uh, go through this channel. You would be able to see some PDFs. So go through the PDFs, download those PDFs and uh, find that date and lecture. Right? Once you get the date, go through the video of uh, that uh, Hindu lecture and uh, then go through this portion of Brazil. It's maybe 8 to 10 minutes. The reason I'm telling you to go through it is because I have talked about some basic things about uh, Brazil and India and Brazil's relationship. So once you have gone through it, then you can come back to this one or you can go through this one first and then you can watch that portion of that of the lecture. So it, I'll leave it on you guys to decide. But do make sure if it's your first day, then I highly recommend you guys to go through that discussion as well. So, right, uh, Brazil. Brazil's JB is infamous, uh, his administration or the way he is taking things. Uh, he is creating many times controversy, just like Mr. Trump. Now, there is a, con a strong connection b between Mr. Trump and uh, JB. He is, JB is a big f fan, I would say, of uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, USA and Brazil, they sh uh, share a very strong relationship as far as the South American continent is concerned. Brazil is one of the strongest ally of uh, USA. Uh, many a times we find controversial statements coming out of uh, JB's mouth, like he has uh, said, uh, you know, he has been openly criticizing LGBT community. Uh, his policies are affecting uh, rainforest of Amazon, as you can see here, this is Amazon Basin, right? This is Amazon and tributaries and contributaries. And then you have this uh, distributaries and tributaries, of course, uh, not contributaries. Tributaries are the ones who are uh, contributing uh, water to a bigger river. The, the, those rivers are called tributaries and those rivers that take away water now, from the bigger river, they are known as distributaries anyway. So here you have Amazon region and uh, the policies of JB has basically, you know, created problems for indigenous people of, uh, of Brazil, particularly living in this Amazon region. Uh, controversial statements like uh, referring to indigenous communities as animals in zoos. So these are the words JB has used in the past. His policies are expanding agribusiness in this portion agribusiness, uh, mining activities, uh, cattle, uh, cattle ranching activities are taking place here. So all these things are not good for the health of Amazon rainforest. And you know it very well that Amazon jungle is known as, or the forest of Amazon is known as lungs of the world. Right For the global climate change and for the balance as well, Amazon jungle plays a very important role so this is how he works or this is a you can say an overview of his administration now brazil has been de uh, designated as a major non-nato ally i have a question for you can you give me the full form of nato nato write down your answer in the comment section 
So Mr. Trump has bestowed this uh, designation uh, on this country, Brazil, uh, just like uh, Japan, Israel, South Korea. Brazil is also a major non-NATO ally. Mr. JB has also followed Washington by relocating Israel embassy, its Israeli embassy, Israeli embassy in the sense Brazil's embassy in Israel. Uh, it was in Tel Aviv, but now it is relocated in Jerusalem. Mr. Trump was the first uh, uh, leader uh, to do this thing. He announced that the uh, USA officially recognizes Jerusalem as as uh, the proper capital of or official capital of Israel and this created a lots and lots of controversy. Remember then Australia followed uh, USA and then we have other countries like Brazil who did the same thing. So this is you know this is again a controversial uh, step taken by uh, JB. He has openly criticized uh, climate activists like Leonardo DiCaprio and Greta Thunberg. Now let's talk about BRICS. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. So BRICS is a platform that connects India and Brazil together. Uh, it is, uh, you know, a very important group as far as multipolarity world is concerned. It is spread across uh, three continents and both hemispheres north and south and as far as three continents are concerned make sure you open your atlas and locate all these countries and um, you know highlight that uh, those continents of course it's going to be very easy but this should be this thing should be very clear in your head now BRICS con uh, combination uh, accounts for one third of global output right so very important in terms of economy uh, you can see major economies as well part of this uh, BRICS group as far as politics and economical condition is concerned, at present, Brazil and South Africa are not doing that well, right? Their GDP growth rate is quite low. Uh, the nature of this BRICS group is informal and uh, this informality is a sort of strength uh, for this group. And to make the most out of this group, uh, you know, this group is a group of all those countries that are considered as developing countries, right? Uh, you may argue that portion of Russia is developed, but uh, there is a big chunk of Russia that is not developed at all. Uh, China has got deep pockets, uh, enough money, but then as well, China, we cannot say that China is completely a developed country. So, all these countries, they have one thing in common, they are developing nations, and uh, the formation of this uh, BRICS uh, was, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it was uh, seen with optimism, uh, because... Uh, this five countries together they created enough weight for for this multipolarity this this uh, you can say uh, the singular heavy handedness i would say or the singular strength of usa and other allies western countries of course european countries i'm talking about so this western culture countries were for a very long period of time they have dominated the world but uh, this BRICS uh, was uh, was seen with uh, high hopes by uh, developing countries that it will create a proper balance and to an extent it has but still you know it's uh, it's uh, uh, throwing i would say punches below its weight uh, it's its potential it has not reached its complete potential to reach its complete potential for optimal utilization all the countries they have to have this compatibility they have to work on their strengths and they have to reduce their weaknesses when it comes to cooperating with each other the biggest achievement of uh, this group or the BRICS is NDB that is new development bank all the countries have uh, contributed equally to its equity and 40 projects at a cost of 12 billion dollar has been financed by this NDB Together, these countries are doing well as far as uh, climate change is concerned. You know, they have followed their means. If we take out Russia, because Russian Vladimir Putin, he's not a great, uh, you know, supporter of climate change. But uh, if you take away, or if we, if we, you know, if we take away Russia from this group, then we have this new group called BASIC, B-A-S-I-C. And this BASIC is promoting uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, it, it has reiterated its support for Paris Agreement as well. Uh, Brazil's engagement with India is reasonably good, right? Uh, recently, Brazil has decided to waive 
visa requirement for Indian citizens. So this will create more trips from India to Brazil. Uh, people to people contact will improve as well as uh, business opportunities will improve. People will visit Brazil for tourism purpose. Of course, it is famous for tourism and uh, for football. We have a uh, you know, huge amount of uh, People in our country, they are a big fan of uh, football. Brazil is also famous for football. So this is one more thing that is connecting India and, and football is gaining popularity in our country in, from recent past. Uh, then people to people contact as well as, uh, you know, official trips. When I say official, I mean to say that business trips will increase as well with this uh, waiving of, of visa requirement. Um, there are various different areas uh, like uh, space and defense, agricultural equipment, animal husbandry, forest harvest technologies, etc., biofuels. These are the places where both the nations can work with each other. We can also expect uh, Brazilian investment in few areas that are, that are just mentioned or that you can see on your screen. If you are following daily financial news analysis series, uh, then you'd be aware that uh, yesterday India said that we are going to purchase more oil from Brazil because India wants to diversify its uh, its uh, energy basket uh, rather than relying on just Middle East or too much reliance on Middle East is also not good. If we find any sort of trouble in this region, then in Middle East region, then it creates a bit of problem for our country. So India wants to expand. Uh, this is the main reason why India wants to expand its energy basket. And Brazil is a country that can supply more oil to us. The two-way trade is not that good. $8 billion, judging by the size of both the nations, populations of both the nations, I would say that $8 billion is, uh, you know, not that impressive figure. We have to work out and there are so many things um, through which we can increase our trade and investment. So that's everything as far as uh, this article is concerned. Now let's talk about a very interesting article, Budgeting for Jobs, Skilling and Economic Revival. This article is talking about how this why this budget is important what are the things and how we can increase jobs rural as well as urban area why skilling is important and uh, the ways through which we can revive our economy so you know this budget is not just it's not just for our nation but it's also for it's of course it is for our nation but i would say that it's not just about this year or the next financial year it's also about the future of our uh, youngsters because what we find nowadays if we go through this periodic labor force survey or labor force participation rate we find that uh, things are in red you know it the, this figures are not impressive as far as l p l f s or l f p r is concerned and there are so many people out there they are having jobs but they are suffering from this employment poverty it means uh, they are not getting that much uh, wages that they deserve uh, because of, uh, uh, you know, high unemployment. There are so many people looking for a job and there are limited jobs out there. So, of course, the person who is your employer, he will have an upper hand. Uh, so, negotiations will be in favor of your uh, employer rather than employees. Uh, depressing employment scenario. There are two reasons behind it. The first one, of course, is economical slowdown. So, how it works, in simple words, slowdown, when you go through or when an economy is going through this slowdown phase, what will happen is that people will buy less. So let me write down here, people will buy less. When they buy less, the factories who are producing goods, they will produce less. The reason why they will produce less is because there is no point of producing extra items uh, when, you are, when you know that you are not able to sell those things. When you produce less, that means as a producer, you will order less raw material. When you order less raw material, your suppliers, you know, they will suffer as well. They will pr produce less raw material. So all these things will create a chain, you know. So end of the day, just imagine that a person who is working in a factory, who is part of this chain, he or she will lose his or her job. Or maybe early on you used to work six days a week, but now you will get only what four days a week. So your income will suffer, your budget will suffer your monthly budget and then you will cut down on your unnecessary spending and this will impact the whole economy so because of slowdown and the second thing is there are several structural factors as well like labor laws land laws capital all these big things are a bit of issue for our country 
capital is available but a very high rate then you have high taxes to pay for corporate now just in recent past government has uh, chopped uh, or slashed uh, this corporate uh, rates uh, but its effect will take place it will be uh, you know it will get means a reflection will take place it's not that you have chopped off uh, corporate tax rate and from tomorrow itself you will see the result no it will take 4 5 months 6 months maybe or maybe more than that uh, second quarter gdp growth was 4.5 and uh, this year's average growth is going to be below 5 so things as far as growth is concerned it's not going to be that great then there is a decline in private consumption and investment as well it's quite natural the example that i have just provided you you can understand when your when demand is less right if if you are producing biscuits let's say and if people are buying less biscuits there is no point for you to open a second factory isn't it you will open or create another factory or another production center only when you know that you are getting more orders and you are not able to cope up with your current capacity so then you will expand your production center but when your current production if you are able to produce let's say 1000 packets of biscuit per day but you are getting orders of what 600 400 only then there is no point of opening another so investment this is how it works investment will get stuck or you won't invest and private consumption is also down so the things that government can do and one suggestion is that government should focus on reviving demand and when it comes to reviving demand first of all we need to focus on a rural demand uh, we can do this thing by uh, increasing the budget of pm kisan as well as mg narega with the help of mg narega we can create irrigation projects we can create a rural infrastructure cold storage logistical chains and much more and all these things will create first of all people will get job in rural area under this mg narega then on this by product will be construction of all these various different important infrastructure this will create more economic opportunities as well and when people in rural area when they will get a new work new job and if they will earn money then they will buy things like oil soap motorcycles and so many other things so this will create a demand for factories as well so this is how we can revive this is one way right it's not the only way there are various different things that we have to work on at the same time but this is one of the thing that we cannot ignore then uh, of course uh, comprehensive crop insurance scheme uh, should be there and uh, it should be you know um, efficient as well as effective so that is important it works as a safety net for our farmers uh, then integrating farms with mandis this will remove those brokers or those middle agents and it will create more income for our farmers more income for our farmers means more money in their hand more money in their hand means uh, they can pay their interest you know if they have any sort of pending loans they can sort that out Uh, they will buy more things tractors and other things uh, that are produced in factories so this will create a sort of uh, it will increase consumption of all these items and it will create new opportunities for factories as well and uh, when we will create this cold storage logistical chains rural infrastructure then wastage of food will come down as well when you have less waste wastage uh, we will be able to uh, you know store more things and spread more things and this will control inflation as well so if inflation is controlled then the monetary policy of committee of rbi will also think about cutting interest rate when interest rate uh, will be slashed a little bit and if we see transition of that interest rate or repo rate um, in actual banks then this will Uh, attract more investors to to borrow loans or to take loans and invest that money in new factories and new businesses and this will create more jobs for various different people working in urban area then talking about urban area right uh, construction is a very important activity and we i'm sure you'd be aware about this thing that there are so many projects out there they are stuck right some of them are stuck at 70% completion some of them are at 50% and they are stuck so huge amount of money crores and crores of rupees right several lakh crore rupees are stuck because of this uh, uh, projects 
Now, there is a crisis in real estate and infrastructure sector, and infrastructure sector is important because it employs somewhere around 5 crore people in urban area. It supports nearly 200 odd industries as well, or sectors like cement, steel, this helmet producing companies, this, uh, you know, corn producing companies. There are so many things, you know, that... Uh, that that gets supported because of this real estate and infrastructure glass steel uh, furniture carpenters painters so many of them uh, electric producers this uh, bulbs and fans and other things so on an average there is somewhere around 200 odd, odd, odd industries that will that will rise up or will sink uh, with up and down of this infrastructure sector so there are a few hurdles like rera there are multiple authorities and uh, various different authorities. There are various different cases that are going on, NCLT and consumer courts. So disputes, we need to sort them out as soon as possible. If there are some NPAs, then we need to clear them, liquidate them as soon as possible so that we can get whatever we can out of those uh, NPAs and this money can be utilized by non-banking finance companies because in our country, NBFCs play they play a very important role as far as small business loans are concerned or small traders. For small traders, NBFCs are a very important source of capital. And when NBFCs are or when their money is, is stuck in this project, right, it, it takes the whole economy down with it. I hope uh, things are clear to you. So budget can raise the limit for availing tax exemption on home loans. So this is the thing that we can do then. Government has recently talked about, in recent past, it has talked about this national infrastructure pipeline. Government is going to invest 102 lakh crore rupees in infrastructure, in various different, uh, you know, things uh, associated with infrastructure. So this is a very good thing. If implemented uh, properly, then uh, in next uh, five years, our GDP will increase by 2% to 2.5% just because of this infrastructure thing. For private investment, uh, right, uh, one thing that we have to understand is that it's not that private investors, uh, they don't have money. They have a huge amount of money as well. They are s sitting on a pile of money, but they are not investing is because of regulatory uncertainty, right? This is as important. Regulatory certainty is as important as the cost of capital. If you are ready to invest, let's say, 5 crore rupees in Indian economy and then you realize that once after investing this thing, after a few months, government came out with uh, rules and regulations that are not good for your business, then your money is gone forever. So this erratic behavior, uh, government should provide this, uh, you know, this certainty that uh, rules and regulations will be as it is now for a bit of long time. And distress among small and medium enterprises there. Their working capital is stuck somewhere around 20,000 crore rupees is stuck with this uh, refunds, uh, GST refunds. Uh, they are not able to claim or get their money on time because of this. Some items are having higher inputs. Raw material is uh, attracting more GST than final product. And because of this thing, this this thing with this, you know, claiming back your uh, input tax credit becomes a bit difficult. So government needs to sort this thing out. There are some 22 lakh vacancies in, in government departments. So should hire more people. If this is the vacancy, then it's a big number. And government can hire people. And for that speedy uh, examination and all these things are important. And last thing, skilling our youngsters. If we want to make sure that our, if we get the most out of our demographic, if we want demographic dividend, then we have to skill our youngsters. They should be ready for all future opportunities. We need to inculcate this flexibility in them. You know, they should have this, we need to create this attitude of of learning forever in them. Uh, because the future is going to be more uncertain, more new things or way of doing things are just around the corner. So we cannot, uh, you know, follow all those old school methods. We have to inculcate new vision and new way of uh, doing things in our youngsters. So these are the things. If we do all these things, then we can definitely revive our economy. Then we have two editorials, uh, easy to understand editorials. One is Needless Impatience and the second one is about Wuhan. So this one, Needless Impatience, is about Nirbhaya case. You know how this uh, dilatory tactics are being used by these convicts and uh, they are you know, knocking one after other, they, they are, you know, knocking doors of various different uh, options. They are they are exploring all the options they have. 
to 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 you know to avoid themselves or to rescue themselves from this execution so central government is not happy central government has requested supreme court to come out with additional guidelines so that uh, this sort of things uh, are not repeated now supreme court has already given its guideline in this shatrughan chauhan case of 2014 and supreme court has said that uh, constitutional rights of prisoners have to be protected and uh, supreme court is right as well now Uh, in this article we find this argument uh, or this uh, conclusion that uh, see at the end of the day uh, this nirbhaya case is a rarest of rare case and uh, we don't have that many rarest of rare cases isn't it so if they are taking if they are exploring all these options let them do it right it will send a strong signal to other people as well that once you are you know once you are once you are found guilty once it's proved that you are the one uh, who have who has done this crime or the group of people if they have done this crime then you can do knock all the doors you can try each and everything you can try each and every trick uh, you know in the book but it's not going to uh, save you from that noose or gallows so let them do it uh, a little bit of delay is okay because we know at the end of the day right uh, they are going to die you know they are going to go through this death penalty of course uh, it's easy to say from here but uh, i i do understand like uh, the parents and uh, the people who are uh, near and dear who means nirbhaya's relatives and friends they want uh, things to end now because they have gone through from 2012 to 2018 Uh, 2020 it's been nearly what 8 years 8 years of suffering is too much but now we are not that far from the end of this criminals uh, china has uh, shut down the city of uh, wuhan because of this uh, corona virus uh, 20 as per 23rd january uh, 571 uh, people are affected and 17 have died because of this corona virus uh, thailand japan south korea taiwan USA Hong Kong Macau Vietnam Singapore these are the places uh, where people are affected with this coronavirus not that many but the biggest uh, center is this Wuhan so chinese government has decided that no one will exit or no one will enter this Wuhan city now most important thing about this uh, coronavirus and you have to understand this thing that it is uh, said by WHO as well that this virus it is proved now that WHO has has accepted this thing as well that it spreads from one person to another right so remember this thing in many a times in mcqs in prelims you find this sort of questions so it's important coronavirus you may find one question about coronavirus because we have seen same thing with ebola and other diseases as well uh, when they are in news in current affairs then you find them as at least one mcq on on this sort of uh, topics last one the origin of our constitution very interesting article now generally we believe that uh, it it was our constituent assembly and it worked for 2 years 11 months and 17 days and then we got our constitution but in this article it is saying that our constitution birth or the seeding took place back in 1909 it was this indian councils act for the first time this council act of 1909 brought indians into governance at the central as well as provincial level of course uh, things were not as democratic as they are now it was just a starting phase then in 1919 we got this government of india act uh, and it was a bit of improvement of this councils act but still it was uh, unrepresentative then we saw this lucknow pact and then later on we got this 1930 simon commission it was of course uh, opposed by people in our country because Um, it was made up of uh, the simon commission the members were all white when i say white i'm talking about british people so government of india act of 1919 uh, you know it came out it recommended much greater indian involvement and then the simon commission came in and to discuss this thing uh, there were three extraordinary round table conferences right in london 1930 1931 and 1932 and uh, things that were discussed here played a very important role in shaping our leaders right ambedkar mohammad ali jinnah and uh, gandhi ji gandhi ji took part in only the second conference but ambedkar was there in all three and uh, it is said that uh, in this all three conferences uh, we saw discussions on federalism civil services regional representations fundamental rights universal adult franchise 
not only that linguistic division of states and reservations and so many things so all those brilliant arguments or interventions by ambedkar in constituent assembly are are uh, product or i would say that uh, you know because of this conference uh, he he got a very strong grip uh, on on all these different subjects and uh, this is the reason why we got our constitution in 1949 so it's all it's it's an ongoing process all these things are these are all milestones 1909 1919 1916 lucknow pact 1919 government of india act then 1935 and early on we had the simon commission and then this round table conferences so all these are big milestones and final result is our uh, constitution uh, there are few people out there they say that our constitution has copied things but i would say it's not copied it's basically borrowed right best ideas best things what we have done is we have uh, borrowed the best uh, items or the best things and our constituent assembly and the members they have uh, given us the best of Uh, the things that we find in various different constitutions of a different world of, of different countries in the world right so this is the thing that we need to uh, cherish so we should look at it from positive point of view it's not copied it is basically borrowed i would say and here are news items uh, right uh, important one is this one cgi has said that uh, there should be an end um, you know this criminals once they have got this uh, death sentence then they should not knock each and every door Uh, as far as corruption index is concerned our la- last year we were at 78 this year we are at 80 so it's bad new snake eel species has been discovered from odisha the name is ophicthus uh, kailash chandrai uh, named after uh, dr kailash chandra and that's everything in uh, today's discussion dear friends thank you very much for watching this video god bless you all jai hind